Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Plus Three Futures and Commodities Show. We are recording here on Friday, August 16th. And the big question we're going to cover today, is this rally for real? And are we going to new all-time highs? Or are we about to have the rug pulled? <laughs> uh, my name's Ben Maldonado. As always, I'm here with my partner, Barry Hederacci. Barry, how we doing? Doing good. Doing good. Uh, well, let's not waste a bunch of time. Let's jump in because mm -hmm. that is the question on everybody's mind right now. So what well, does the evidence show? Well, let's see what we have at this point. Last week, you know, we talked about 53.10 and being able to hold above it. You remember that? That was the main theme. Big, big level. Yep. And we held above that. And 55.76, I was looking at this. I was pointing out to this uh, 54.34, 30. 35, this level right there, 5433 level mm -hmm. being structurally, you know, having some resistance because of this overhead. Yep. And if it blows through that, then we're, you know, the next level we had up there, 5566 was the next strong level. And there and, we are. <laughs> and here we are. You know, here right. we are. I mean, right. the good thing was we were looking for some kind of a counter trend. Yes. And, and, and we got it in spades. Okay, great. Now, is it going to continue or are we going to um, turn around? So that's really the key to look at. And let's look at what we have. Let's look at evidence we have and take it apart. I know people have been asking on uh, on X, Twitter, you know, is the speed of this rally mean anything? What does that mean? And mm -hmm. I'm like, it, it increases the chances we're going to keep going. Yeah, speed. It's interesting how it shows up. Mm -hmm. uh, well, let's take a look at the, um, you know, we had a lot of people wanting to also for us to talk about the cash chart. So here's the cash SPX. The big theme here is that, you know, the high came in, you know, 90 by 90 square right there. You know, we yep. ran up from the April low, July high was, you know, 90 degrees up in price and 90 calendar in days, time. calendar days in time. So that was, that was, that was a square and this would be And that's a good reaction. Yeah, off the square. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, it, it's all perfect. Now, mm -hmm. the, the level that it reached was okay. You know, we came down in a hurry. We also were blasted off in a hurry in this um, on this reaction. So, like you said, the question now is, you know, is it done? Is it, you know, what's the bigger picture here? What, what's happening? Mm -hmm. Well, if you guys were watching us, you know, we talked about, you know, our basic rules are if we get above the 50% of the square, you know, we have more upside. And I'll get into the 30-minute chart, you know, how we trade that. And this is the chart that gets posted on X every morning. And that gives us a little bit more insight into what's happening in the lower time frames, which is sort of a leading leading indicator, you know, in, in that yeah. sense. Yep. So the down move was okay and the bounce is okay. We got we got everything we we wanted to see in, in a normal pattern after market squares out. Mm -hmm. So the market squared out, we got the reaction, we got the correction. And now the, the key here is, you know, is that a big enough of a square? Like a nine, just a 90 day square is not, you know, sure, we can go on for three months, but uh, it could also be a quick reaction. Like you said, you know, people can buy it up and, and mm -hmm. you know, go on higher. But here it's not just that. You know, we can look at the weekly. Let me just jump to the weekly right now. You know, in the weekly picture, it wasn't just a 90 day, which was really the short version here, right? Three months. Mm -hmm. But we did 90 weeks. Which is big. Which is big. So the, the so the thinking at the time was, hey, you know, we have ninety weeks. Do we have anything else expiring into that high? And when we talked about that, you know, that's when we brought in uh, this ninety square, and we had a couple of other squares that expired at the same place, the same time as the ninety week. So this is not just simply a ninety day. So we have that ninety week cycle coming in. So I'm, you know, that that's sort of the context and the framing. Based on that, what are we gonna what can we expect here? Well, we did we did five eighths correction. Five eighth correction is a it's a decent correction. Mm -hmm. You know, you can get three eighths, five eighths. So I'm guessing if six is, one eight, some some people call it. Yeah, well, yep, yeah, yep, yeah, it's close enough. Mm -hmm. So they say that go from the low, let's say seven eighths is around fifty five eighty two on the mm -hmm. cash. Mm -hmm. And we did and getting right up in there, it's about five eighths of the square. And that's just how we have to measure. If we can stop there, then I would say the counter trend is more or less complete. Mm -hmm. The thing is, it's possible that we get above the 55.85 high on this bar on the July 23rd high. 
and that could set up sort of a false break kind of phenomenon here because we will take out this high mm -hmm. and that high. Okay, so mm -hmm. we're watching for that. If you draw a straight line across 55, 82, any action under that would count towards a counter train being finished. You know, mm -hmm. so I'm, I'm my thinking. If we get above that, we get above the five eights, then we have something else happening. Then we open up to the fact that we can run up higher and maybe do a false break Yep. into the end of the month. Now, the other thing is these markets just don't go zigzag perfectly. It's possible that we run up, we correct for a couple of days, and then take another shot. You know what I mean? We could have mm -hmm. a wider sort of a distribution before we turn down. Exactly. If we were to turn down, but we're using these levels to to understand how what the behavior is like. So on the cash chart, the level we're really watching is this. Let's just say fifty five eighty two is a level. Let me put that in there. And I also thought about building this chart up as we go every week. That way, people sure. can watch. You know, see see how how it's done. The and the good point the the good point about this cash chart is, you guys made comments a, uh, on the video. You know, after watching the video, you put in mm -hmm. comments saying you wanted to see the cash chart, and you know, continue to do that, and we'll respond with you know with content that that matches what what the you know a lot of people want, and a lot of people want, wanted yeah. to see the cash chart. So here you go. Let's get back into the um, e -mini. futures e mini, mm -hmm. and the e mini we have fifty five sixty six was a was a key level. And we're, you know, of course, we're looking like we're trying to close above it. And, mm -hmm. and we might, if we do, uh, so be it. Uh, the main thing is, you know, we had a two by one here and we took it out. So we know the market is not super, super weak and, and it's not time yet. And if we had a one by one, we took that out too. Mm -hmm. The way I look at this, I mean, really, if we're going to look at analyzing what it means to have a counter trend or buy the dip or is it going to continuation and this is just a sort of a, another correction in the continuation of it thing uh, of the market is to really look at how fast and how quickly we take out this gain angles that are in this case sloping down mm -hmm. but if the one by one gets taken out well you know it's just my time in so that means there is a future time that's going to come up when the market will just tap and, and it'll just turn down just like we did did here you know Mm -hmm. Well, obviously, we didn't reach that time yet. So, so you know, it just, just seems like it's going to be next week because it's hard to, I can't imagine the market just running up for 10 days straight without some kind of a correction. So, so that's my thinking along the lines of why we didn't stop and what to expect when we can expect it to stop in the coming days. Now, when I say stop, I'm talking about, I'm still thinking in, in the counter trend mode, right? Because mm -hmm. the high is still in place. We had a square, we had the 90 week. So I'm still thinking, and we didn't really have a big square here at the low. No. You know, as a matter of fact, at the low, we didn't even uh, finish the, you know, what I would call like the normal measured move in the S&P, you know? Mm -hmm. And that would have been down at around 50, 80. So we didn't quite get to that. And we're just, this is our first weekly counter trend bar. So we're down, you know, one, two, three, four bars and we're just up one. So I'm thinking of this as a counter trend. I'm, I'm really have to have that hat on or, or think along those lines until this high gets taken out because it, mm -hmm. it was a 90 week high. So that's sort of how I'm framing this. So not to get confused, you know, we have to look at both sides, but we still have to keep in mind that we did square out and long as that square is in place, market can do all kinds of patterns here and still, still continue downwards, right? That's kind of what I'm thinking. Sure. That makes sense? The, yeah. The frame. Yeah, yeah. Basis on the E-mini now going into next week, 5566 becomes the key level to watch. If we can hold above that, then we're definitely going to go up and test the 5682, which is no little just a number because that's, you know, 270 degrees up from the low in October of 2022, right? This low. So from that low up would be... That 56.22. So that it's important. Can we go up and uh, sort of do this, you know, hang around, crisscross along that line? Well, that can happen. It happens mm -hmm. often, like we did here. Mm -hmm. You know, it, we can get to a level and crisscross, no problem. Sometimes it's clean. When we get above, we get above. Uh, sometimes not so clean. But you can see here, it was very clean. Once we broke above, all the checkbacks were perfectly on the line. 
Mm-hmm. If we manage to hold about 55, 66, we'll probably get to 56, 82 and test that. We can get above that, then we can probably say, hey, you know, we have the potential to continue. Now, the only caveat there is that, you know, doing that in a double top kind of a fashion, we could easily do a false break and run back down again. You know what I mean? Yes. So we, have to, we have to keep that in mind. I think those are really the key key things to watch. Now, the other thing is we could, if we if we run up into, I mean, time-wise, both charts are the same. I just want to come back here because it's easier. Like September 1st is 135 from that low. Yeah, that first week of September, I got a lot of timing in there. Right? Mm-hmm. So if we somehow correct in here and somehow manage to get up in there around September 1st, say plus or minus a day, and we could false break here. So on the same count on the cash chart, we're looking at 56.73. So you guys have mm-hmm. that number. You know, So here... If we get about 55.82, 56.73 is really the next number to watch. Okay. Mm-hmm. On the S&P, we talked about it, 56.80, 55.66 is the level to hold above. And if you notice, I mean, we're running up practically straight up. We're not even talking about a one by two, sort of an angle or even one by no, one. That looks like more like four by one. What that means is we have plenty of time and space to correct before taking another shot at this area. So it's possible that we turn down and, you know, trying to trade this. I just want to take a minute to explain this. If we think this is a counter trend, you know, markets don't always make it textbook, right? They all, you know, it's always some kind of a twist with what happens. It's just because of the way we look at things. So if this was a the high that we are very impressed with because of the weekly and the daily squares firing at the same, same place and, and continuing to think that this is a counter trend move, it's possible we do it A, B, C up into that, you know, mm-hmm. A, B, and a C in here somewhere, and a D right up into that that time frame, the one thirty five sure. that I was talking sure. about, which is here. Yeah. So yeah. just keeping that in mind when we talk about well, we can get up into September first. We could do that. We could do it directly, or we could do it counter trend and up. Mm-hmm. I mean, the preferred way would be. I mean, the easiest picking would be to try to correct. And then go up into it, do a false break. I mean, that would be just about perfect. Yeah, it would. Right. And and I think in this case, if the if the market is really trying to get most people on the wrong foot, uh, I think making a new high here would probably do it. <laughs> mm-hmm. And if we do that and we do it on time, and here we have timing, uh, not mm-hmm. only timing from the low in uh, April, but we also have ni- uh, 45 high to high. And so bigger, bigger cycles too. And bigger cycle. Yeah. Well, yeah. We have bigger cycles. So all of that comes in, you know, 45 high to high. So all of these things we're watching. And so if we get past the 5582 or, you know, let's go back to the futures chart. Let's say we hold about, I'm not even going for the eights. Let's just say we're holding about 5566. Mm-hmm. Then I think the path that we're going to be taking would be to go up in here uh, and probably false break. And mm-hmm. then turn down. Mm-hmm. Now we don't have to. I mean, sure, we could get up right up into the line and turn down and just be a lower high, a normal, sure. regular lower high. But we're talking about like you know what would be like really get everybody bullied up, bullied up. You know that would be to. Oh my god! Yeah. I, I could yeah. see him loading the boat with people. If I mean, know, if we take oh, this it's out. going to six thousand. <laughs> jump on! Absolutely. Uh, so if we do, if we get about fifty six eighty two. And hold there for that one day, the day that we made the false break, and the next day we reverse. Then you guys know, okay, something's up. This is a false break that we talked about. Mm-hmm. So that's that. Let's jump to the, the Dow chart really quick. You know, on the Dow, we are well the 180. We cracked that. 41 348 was the next number that I had up here for resistance. So I would think if everything else is everybody else is rallying, we could expect it to get up here and find some resistance. And it also has capacity to do a false break or not, or it could be a lower high, you know, Dow's being a little bit lagging here and there. Yeah. So we'll take it as it comes. Is that okay so far? I don't want to, yeah. I want to yeah. keep it kind of simple, but also try to explain the bigger picture, you know, like what's the thing, what should the thinking be here? And we have no, to look th- at both sides of the road. I think you've given a good 
review of the possible scenarios coming, you know, coming up in the next couple of weeks. Cause this is a, it's a critical spot. We're either going to make a lower high and have a big move down mm-hmm. or we're going to push through and make, you know, higher highs and keep going. And, and, and the, the third scenario is the false break scenario. And you got to know what to look for when it's happening, because in, in real time, you can't like go back and check your books and see, okay, mm-hmm. what does this pattern look like? It happens fast. Exactly. And I think I think the short side, a bigger move to the short side is still open. It's in the books. But until we're proven otherwise, we really have to read it carefully. I think the bounce was okay, but I think in here it's gonna get a little tricky now. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, the other rest of it's kind of it was easy trading coming off of because we were all, you know, the bounce was sort of eminent. All right, let's jump to go ahead. I was gonna say I also like your um sort of thinking like a criminal that the 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 way to get most people off sides is to make a new high of some kind. Yeah, and just hold it up for that one day, and the next day we take <laughs> yeah. out the low. You know, just yep. slide, slide right down. Yep. So these are the kind of the possibilities. I'm I'm thinking along those lines. And when it comes to the 30 minute, so what happened? You know, we had Monday. So last week, uh, I think we left off with 56, 53, 60 was the level to watch. You know, we said, well, you know, you can see how we stalled out here a couple times, and and we talked about this potential expanding triangle. Remember that. Mm-hmm. And I think what I said was when an expanding triangle, you know, the one side blows out, it really moves. And and not, even though this wasn't an amazing huge one, for the size it had when it blew out, it did move. Yeah. Anyway, getting back to, you know, this is about watching levels. We Now we're really getting into a zone when we have to watch price action and, and time because the reason is the downside could be very impressive. And I think the trading to the downside, if we do get a lower higher, some kind of a termination, the, the potential is really good. And I think it's worth talking about it. You know, I think it also buries two things. It's that meaning the, the potential to the downside could be massive and a massive yeah. move. Mm-hmm. And the easy money has already been made on the counter trend. And that's well, that's my point. The easy money on the counter trends already been made. Yep. Exactly. Thank you. That's what I was I was trying to say. <laughs> and and now we're stuck in this very kind of a tricky zone, right? Come coming mm-hmm. into a tricky zone. Mm-hmm. All right. How was the easy money made? So 5360 was a level we were watching. We had to get above that and tested we, it beautifully. Know, yeah, we did it beautifully. Broke this little triangle, started moving higher. Next level was 5448, if you guys remember. Well, mm-hmm. 5406 was the next level. And you can little, see we little pause there. Pause there, got above, came back and tapped it and moved higher, 54.48. And I thought, you know, this would have been a good place to terminate if that was, you know, if the market was tired. Mm -hmm. And how we would know that is it would basically consolidate below the level, you know, 54.48. And we talk about this a lot. But here we got on top and we held above very nicely. And after we did this little false break, or you can call it like a flush in the morning, that was it, you know, that now yep. we're we're headed right to 5539. And we talked about that. So once we got through the little bit of a resistance at at the um, quarter line, which is mm-hmm. around 5500, and that was overnight. And, and then we you know, moved right up 5539, took it out. Next level, the big level was really 5583, even though I know this is a thicker red line, but uh, looking from other squares, I'm, you know, calculate from other points. This 55.85 turned out to be a strong level. And mm-hmm. you can see, you know, we, we came up in here and installed overnight. And you can see when you have good levels, 55.39, you guys know we've had this here, you know, for a long time. And you can see how we came and tapped it and ran back up to 55.85. So we did, we covered the range perfectly, right? So the, our brackets are good. Our levels are good. We were behaving very well within that. So that's up until today. So what happens? You know what happens next? I, I would recommend watching these levels, um, uh, at least on the futures market. Fifty-five thirty-nine is really the level. You know that sort of the early, you know, at the canary in the uh, canary line. That's what I should mm-hmm. call it. <laughs> you know, right? If if fifty-five thirty-nine goes, something's definitely up. It it mm-hmm. shouldn't really go at this point. If this is going higher, what we really want to see it for you to take out fifty-five eighty-five. Get on top and start grinding through these other levels that we have. So these are the two numbers to watch. It's a nice bracket. Why do we say that? Because it's already proven. 
You see how we bracket it nicely. And if you go back to end of July, you can see we kind of got bracket, you know, boxing into that same bracket. See that mm -hmm. right there? Yep. And we did the false break that we always talk about, and then boom, that was that's how the whole the second part of the move started, right? Mm -hmm. And so yeah, I would say 5539, 5585. That's the thing to watch on the 30 minute. You guys can do that. I think um, you'll have over. good levels. Yeah, we'll have good levels, and it'll help identify what's happening, you know, in the moment. Mm -hmm. We already covered the different scenarios that can happen. So yeah, that's it for the ES. If you guys like our work, you know, please subscribe, like, like for sure <laughs> if you like it. <laughs> subscribe yeah. and also you know click the bell for alerts and what else? And also comment. You know, if you make guys sure want to, to comment. It. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And last week we got a lot of comments. Uh, which was great because it's good to get some feedback. Otherwise, we're kind of talking in a box. If any, if you guys want to see other markets, we got some suggestions for other markets, so I'm going to try to work those in in, in the coming days and weeks. Uh, in the meantime, let's move on to bonds. Oh, that, that looks like it's uh, <laughs> an, another decent setup, right? It's it's forming a little triangle here, and the directional exactly. break off that triangle mm -hmm. is going to tell you which which way the move's going. Yep. And now last week, you know, our big topic was about triangles. And, and here we are. You know, we're starting to get one in bonds. And, and it's happening. And the, mm -hmm. and the clue, Barry, is, is what? Mm -hmm. it's, it's doing it below the line. Exactly. Yep. So mm -hmm. be careful. Be careful with bond. Because we have a potential square out coming here. You know, we had 216 days out yep. and up 72 degrees. And here's where we talked about, you know, potential false break, which we got. The thing is, it didn't go too far. You know, it held really, I mean, well above this line. Yeah, this long, that's true. Line we drew up. Which is very held, uh -huh. bullish otherwise. Yeah, it, it, it's definitely signaling strength versus weakness. At the same time, if we can't take out the high that we had on August 14th, that's potentially setting up an ABCD down. Okay? Mm -hmm. So we got to watch for that. Again, you know, 124, 125 is sort of the zone we talked about last week. And this week, it's still the same because we're still stuck below that so watch those levels if we can eventually settle above 125 i think then we can talk about moving higher otherwise it's probably just a bunch of um, consolidation in this area until we take out 124 and start it moving lower so that's kind of how i'm going to frame it we don't want to jump into a triangle that's contracting so we'll leave it at that and moving on to weekly bonds nice inside bar this week Nice inside bar, and you guys already know what to do with that. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, but the beauty of that is we have an inside bar on the weekly, and we have that little triangle setting up on the daily and four hours. Mm -hmm. you know? mm -hmm. So they, when you combine them, it makes sense to trade the breakout. Yep. Unless it's a false breakout, of course, but that can happen any day. But here, that's what we have. And if we take out, take it out to the upside, you know, one twenty eight seems like the next place to go. If we Take it out to the downside. Well, you know, we did have a run up and we did have a false break high uh, last week. So we'll, I think we can go lower. Either way, that's that's how we're looking at it. And we're really going to have to pin it to the triangle breaking out. You know, one thing on bonds, Barry, the, um, mm -hmm. the last few weeks, you know, two, three, four weeks, I've noticed over the last couple of years, you know, bonds and stocks have been positively correlated. Like when bonds went down, stocks went down. Mm -hmm. It looks like it's flipped and now mm -hmm. they're back to being negatively correlated. Meaning when, like we saw in the big sell-off, bonds were ripping higher and, and stocks were going lower. And then bonds started selling off and stocks were recovering. So that, that relationship looks like it has um, flipped back to how it was prior to like, what was it, 19, uh, 2021, when this whole thing started with the sell-off in bonds. Mm -hmm. So it's it bears watching how how that that relationship has has changed, um, mm -hmm. and and we've potentially moved into a different regime here. Let's move on to crude. Back to violently sideways. My goodness, you know, <laughs> talk about put everybody to sleep. Yeah, I don't know how, but this is amazing. I think given what's in the news and what's happening with crude, but. It just goes on to cement the point that we've been talking about. You know, these things, when they coil up and when they're going sideways, putting in triangles, you know, ultimately when they break out, the moves are fierce. And yep. uh, just it, there's, a, there's a fierce one coming in this for sure. So here, it's not much different from last week because it's, it's been fairly tight trading. 
the point was 79.50 was our resistance. You know, we basically ran up there and go back to, well, uh, we'll get back down to 73.50 and maybe bounce around uh, these two levels, 73 and 79. And that would be sort of the bracket, just like we talked about in the 30 minute. Mm -hmm. The nice thing about squares is, you know, it's easy to bracket these prices with knowing why it makes sense, having some logical reason to have a bracket instead of just boxing up patterns, right? So mm -hmm. you, can, you can do that, but then it's, you know, you're not sure like why, <laughs> what, what's the logic right. behind it. In this case, so 70, you know, we'll have to go forward with that. If 73.50 gets taken out, we're probably going to make new loads or another false break to the downside. And if we go to the upside, 73, you know, if we go higher on overnight, Sunday night or Monday, and we left that little space under the low, base mm -hmm. low, mm -hmm. it's definitely stronger. And we can probably take out 79.50 on the next run up. But let's see. All I'm saying is this thing is just coiling a little too much <laughs> and uh, and building a lot of energy building a lot of energy and my only thing is you know it's good to have i mean getting positions is every you know you guys really should watch your signals to see when you'll you'll get a buy or sell signal but the thing is i have this funny feeling it's, it's going to be one of those things where you wake up in the morning and like you know we're up 30 bucks <laughs> and it gaps right <laughs> and just it gaps a huge and what gap. are you going to do you know then right. then you have to chase it so hopefully it'll be smoothly but you know, having it coiled for this long is kind of um, given the time window we're in. Bit ominous. Just reminding you guys. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I, think I think everybody knows. And getting back to the weekly on the crude, we are firmly within the box. And the triangle. And, and the triangle. I mean, I just can't believe it. They're going to run the triangle out. So let's, I'm just so curious to see how yeah. this breaks. <laughs> right. You know, right. it's going to break. It's only a couple more weeks left. Sure. But so far, it's, it's seriously. Uh, maintaining well within the triangle. So, we'll and I happens. guess we want to be clear our bias is it's going to break to the upside, but if it breaks to the downside, we'll trade the downside. Yeah, we'll the, take the yeah. move's going to be massive. Mm -hmm. Yes, I think so. I think so. And I would really like to see that. Yeah, <laughs> to the downside. I mean, <laughs> yeah, I'll be, I'll be, uh, you know, I'm not going to lie, I'm going to be a little weary, you know, trading. <laughs> Uh, it would really have to, something would have to happen. I mean, especially no, that's when we're going to get on the phone and say, you listen, we got to take it. Take yeah. It. Right now. Yep. <laughs> the thing is the 66, 67 level is the key here. You know, if you, if you look at the weekly chart, you can see we went up 120 degrees. I mean, there's a whole move. 50% mm -hmm. is down here. Yep. And you know, and we're, and, and a 50% correction in a bigger bull market is totally normal and yes. it's healthy. And in this case, we held the butt. I mean, this is a weekly, so you know it's it, it's boring just watching this. But you can see how well we held about the fifty percent, and yeah. and the fact that we're coiling above it. You know, the odds are we're going to break to the upside. Sure. Now to the downside, yeah, we can probably maybe do some shenanigans here, but I would like to see it get under sixty six to, to right. see what happens. You know, and somehow a push comes to shove, and you know world turns upside down then we can get to 36 for crude <laughs> yeah. let's say let's say peace breaks out you know right uh, and, and, and the economy uh, falls off of, off the table yeah <laughs> so we could we could see it could I be mean, 36 yeah yeah basically you know if we leave the uh, square the next next stopping point is really down at the 35 36 level that's correct yep. in the meantime because you know if it's really a true if you go back and study crude before any meaningful move is always like a radical fake out before that no happens. question major shake out so, yeah yeah some markets more than others include one of them yeah it doesn't have to do it all the time it only does it when when the move is size, sizable you know and let's move on to gold well 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 what do we gold have? is moving well, on man it's like nobody's business and this Such is exactly what we've been talking about beautiful about thing. how gold is bullish and we've been bullish all through here you guys know we've been I think ever since we started talking on the podcast, we've been bullish on gold. Yeah. Right? Yeah, I think so. And <laughs> it's just boringly grinding higher. It is just grinding higher. Well, and then, you know, when it got to the 270, we talked about, hey, you know, we have a, you know, we squared out and we are triangulating. And then we kept talking about, you know, it's a quiet market is triangulating right under 270. We want to watch it because it's starting to make higher lows. Mm -hmm. And I don't know, I can't remember, maybe three, four weeks ago, we talked about how this is really not a weak signal. No. This is actually bullish. 
but we were going to wait to see how you know, each bar um, gets put into place. And sure enough, a couple of weeks ago, we broke out and we talked about it. And the following bar came back to check the 270 line. You can see the low of the last week's low came in here mm -hmm. and, and they bought it up this week, moving higher nicely. And here's another good example of a high of an inside bar taken out and we moved higher. And I think, you know, Ben, this is also a good example of how, you know, we talk about triangles breaking in the beginning. You know, mm -hmm. I talked about how, you know, it has to wait till the right time to move up or down, right? Like right. we talked about crude. And here, this is a good example. And this is the thing that you mentioned earlier when we were talking about the low that was in October mm -hmm. and how that squared out at the high. And, yep. and you know, anytime um, these weekly charts get squared out, I'm all ears. <laughs> <Because> <laughs> right, right. Because I want to make sure, you know, that we catch all of that. And it doesn't happen often. So you, that's why you got to be so aware of it, you mm -hmm. know, especially like 45s and 90s and 180s. Those are big. Exactly. So here I turned out the other square. I think it was too distracting. Yeah. So here we can see how, you know, we were up exactly 90 degrees mm -hmm. and in 45 weeks. So this is a big deal. This is almost almost as big as the square that we had in, in the S&P. Yeah, the 90 by 90. Mm -hmm. So because mm -hmm. of that, I think we ought to sort of take a pause here and uh, see what, what happens. Because we really have to see if we can get about 2550 or not. So I think gold, you guys watch 2550 and see if we get above that or not. If we get above, fine. I think then there's... Then we really run. Then we really run. And there's a much bigger thing happening. And that's, you know, now we're talking 2,900, 3,000. I'm going up to 3,000, which is no small deal. <laughs> and it may, Barry, it also may turn out to be just like it was before where um, we chop around just under that square and still mm -hmm. above the highs of that triangle, which would be, again, be bullish. It'll still be bullish. That's right. Yeah. That's right. And so we'll watch it. We'll watch to see what happens. Like it, this is, we don't have to wait too long. It's 25, 47 now, 48. And we're just talking about 25, you know, holding about 25.51. If yep. you do that, then we have to, you know, watch it moving higher. If we don't do it, then we know there's some kind of a correction coming. Yeah. Now, going off the low in 22, which is also interesting, uh, you know, here we formed the triangle above the 50% of the square, mm -hmm. right? And we broke out. And this area is a little muddy. It's not quite, you know, below or above the line. Right. So I'm 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 thinking the price is running off of this low versus the 22 low. Mm -hmm. so I'm not too concerned about this, but still, it's good to know if we settle above the 2551, then we know that we can probably get to 27 yep. <laughs> based based on the the low from 22. So just things to keep an eye on. I think for now we've had a good run, and I think 90 degrees up in gold, no matter which swing low. It's something to pay attention to. I think sure. That's a good way to take that forward. All Don't right? chase it. <laughs> yeah, not to chase that. Um, you should be in it anyway, but don't chase it. Mm -hmm. So here's, I mean, we normally do uh, daily first and then the weekly, but here's the daily. So daily is coming off that 23 low in October. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, we're up 180 degrees. There's your 180, and, yep. Mm-hmm. And we're right there. So we'll watch the same numbers. It's the same same thing. And then we'll want to see. If we settle above, of course, we have higher to go. If we don't, then ideally, you know, we want to hold above 24, 27, 28, this area mm -hmm. right yep. there. Yep. So we'll leave gold at that. Let's take a look at copper. Perked up, didn't it? Perked up. We came down for uh, two months, a couple of months, right? Yeah. Uh, yep. 60, 60 days. And I would say kind of squared out. It's because man look know. at the timing on that square barry all through it's good mm -hmm. even in yeah. the chop look at it in the in the chop how it was on the yeah it came down 30 <laughs> no back back in like uh early 24 late 23 look at the changes even in the chop ah, yeah yeah exactly right on the 60 mm -hmm. yeah it's been it's been a very good square so i'm i'm guessing this low is good to go mm -hmm. and long as any kind any pullback 
corrections hold about 407. I think copper is in really good shape. So yeah. just leave it at that. And uh, we can look at, yeah, I think long side is okay long as we're above that 407. The only, only thing to watch is just because it's above and it's bullish doesn't mean it's going to run straight up. So you have to, right. you're going to have to still trade it. But I think long as we're above that 407, the idea is that, you know, we're better off trading the long side. Yeah, pressures to the upside. Mm -hmm. And this is the kind of ending we're looking for in, in the S&P or anything that's moving off of a square. We want to look at that. And remember, this was the 216-week high that we looked at it a few weeks yep. ago. That was a big and, one. Yeah. So uh, so let's stay, jump to the weekly because I want to show, show you something there. Mm -hmm. So on the weekly, uh, okay, so here's the 216 that came yep. in. Yep. And, man, it's really hard for me to imagine that that was it, you know? And mm -hmm. now we're just going to continue the rally. <laughs> right. So, <laughs> if we could, we could easily. But for the weekly to really kind of get out of the water, it needs to get above 423, 424. So we'll watch mm -hmm. for that. This is a little early. But once we get above 423, 424 level, which is square 144 coming off the low in 2020, I think then uh, the moment will pick up, you know, and, mm -hmm. and we should move a little bit faster once we get above the square. And that's how it's been before, too. If you notice, once we break out of the square, it runs up. Break out of the square, it runs up. See? The movement becomes a lot faster. So so we'll watch for that. That's um, that's it for the weekly. Anything you want to add? No, that's good call on copper. Yep. Let's take a look at the dollar. Well, we got to the ABCD pretty much on time, maybe off by a day. I'm talking about this one. Yep. And we're back to 60 on support. Uh, where we started, yep. Mm -hmm. And well, we're we're actually we're only operated within the 50% of the square, so that's 30 degrees up and 30 degrees down. We looked at this to be resistance and all those things came out perfectly. We looked for this uh lows to be taken out. If if these lows were getting taken out, we expected it to go down and visit the old low, which it did. But I remember saying if it gets down to this level, we're probably going to check this and maybe false break. Yeah. And we did that. Yep. Uh, but but the, you know the problem here is it, it really didn't have a strong recovery off that false break. I'm a little bit suspicious. <laughs> you know. You know what uh, I like about this chart is it's been stuck in this half square, just in a range, and the the narrative has been the dollar's going to hell. The dollar's going to lose its reserve currency status. The dollar's mm -hmm. going to zero. All mm -hmm. this negativity about the dollar, and it's basically gone nowhere since March. Yeah. 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 And it held the low, the two main main lows we had. Yep. So let's see what happens next week. I think if the, I, I, you know, the way I'm going to look at it is if the low, August 5th low gets taken out, which happens to be uh, 102. If that low gets taken out, we'll probably have lower to go, probably up into this 100 uh, mm -hmm. and 50 cents, 50, or 99.50. We're going to probably go down and check this area, which is where the, this corrective ABCD came in mm -hmm. and, you know, keeping true to how these markets work. If we're really going to break out and run, um, it wouldn't be, you know, out of the question to come up and flush this out, you know, everything under this. So that's at the 99.50 level. Mm -hmm. So let's keep that in mind. That's if we slip through the low on August 5th. If we manage to hold above, then you know we can expect it to go back up to 105, at least test this 103.90 level where the old, you know, all these overhead sits. Mm -hmm. But that's kind of how we look at it. And so the key level is is 102.36 level. All right, that's simple enough, right? Because it, sure. it is a kind of a decision making point. <laughs> it's a key level. For sure. Yep. And and if we put the, I mean, the thing is that it's kind of an odd place to put it because I was really looking at it from this high. So if we look at it from this high, we're just at the 50% bouncing around. You know? mm -hmm. So it's just a matter of if we take these lows out, what happens? We also get under the 50%. So it makes sense to get down to here. Sure. All right. Let's see what happens? Looking at the weekly dollar. Kind of at the In same that place. triangle. In the triangle and in, in a, in a similar place, right? Yeah. Um, meaning very close to the square. So mm -hmm. if we... If we take this out, I feel like what's going to happen is 
not only are we losing that this support at this high, but we're also going to lose the triangle, and we're probably going to trade lower. So that's where the triangle comes comes in. If we if we lose this and we have definitely a break to the downside, if we hold it and rally, then you know the other side is happening coming true. So either one to happen, watching those two levels will help. You know, we'll know which way it's breaking. When it's There's breaking. a big move coming in the dollar because we've been triangulating yeah. for a yeah. while. Exactly. So let's see. I mean, I'm just very curious to see how this breaks out. Mm -hmm. <laughs> see what happens. But if we recover, obviously there's more time to go till something <laughs> till something something drastic happens. Mm -hmm. All right, let's move on to the euro. Doing the unthinkable. Um, Sitting about on top of the 144, yeah. Yeah, right. So not only, you know, and it also came back for a check back and got bought right. up. So so here we are. I didn't think it was strong enough to do it, but what happened? So it's about 144. Now we have to respect that. And uh, we'll see how much higher it can go. Now, this 1.8 level was it has been a major level, you know, in, in the past. Mm -hmm. So this 104... 104 level, really, the 104 level is the one to watch. If we can get above 110. I'm sorry, 110 level. Yeah. Is the, yeah, I'm sorry. 110, 110, 418 is to be precise. Yeah. But that's the eighth of the next square. And the thing with me is that we've stalled out at that area a lot in the past. Multiple times. Multiple yeah. times. So it's possible we stall out, but we're above the main square. So let's see how that works out. And I think the dollar will clue us in. You know, as we go, but watching the dollar end, this will help out. Yeah, yeah, you know I mean? very good, yeah. very good. Let's move on to the weekly. It's busting out of the triangle. Busting out, but the dollar's not right. So there's something something's so, cooking here. Yeah, uh, and I'm just wondering when this normally happens, things like this. You know, you always wonder: is that the false break to the upside, and then the misdirection, the right? Mm -hmm. It could be a misdirection. Anyway. Uh, this 109 and a half level, 109.50 is the level that we really want to watch basis of weekly. So long as we're under that triangle or no triangle, this is sort of the upper, upper uh, let's just say, uh, support resistant level that I had forever. And above that 90 up, we, you know, where we, we almost got to it in 2023, 90 up is around one uh, 130. That's where we could potentially head. Okay. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, that's all I have to add for that. Pretty cool how 108 held, huh? Before yeah. the move started to move, you know, go higher. So I think 109.50 is really the you know, the next next level to watch. Sure. Uh, go from there. Uh, looking at that gas really quick. Same story, we you know moved higher. You know, you covered net gas last week. We were in, the, yeah. you know, at the, we're coming right off the lows. We did move higher, and it's having a sort of a little, little bit, bit of a direction. pullback. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's like a lot of commodities that I talked about last week. They're doing exactly that. So we just give them a week off and see what see where these corrections end up. Yeah, see how they set up. Mm -hmm. And uh, let me see what else I have here. Well, we can't pass up the Hang Seng. We mess around at the fifty percent level. We really, you know, we didn't get stuck under it, you know, we were under it for a few days, came right back to the 50% level, and now we're moving higher. So I think that maybe this is the Asian way of doing a flush, <laughs> you know, correction. Right, right. And, you know, or head fake, you know, get under, spend a few days. But again, here, you know, if you take the, you know, you can see the inside bar, if you take the high off the inside bar, you trade in that direction, you can see how it worked out just fine. For sure. So again, same rules back to uh, 17, 150, as long as we're above that. I think it has room to run to the upside. So I'll leave it at that. Let me put it back to you and Excellent. Cover, cover some of the commodities. That was good right. coverage of a lot of uh, a lot of markets that we're trying to figure out. You know, are we going to make a lower high or a higher high? Mm -hmm. And you know, the thing is, sometimes it's easy because it, it, the patterns are very obvious. And sometimes you're in the middle, in between patterns. Sometimes you're at the beginning end. So this is sort of in the middle kind of a I feel like at least for the S and P, we're kind of in the middle of something, so we're waiting to see what the termination point is on the other side, sort of the frame mm -hmm. for this week. All right, let me put it back to you. Okay. I mean, pretty much the same story. We're kind of in the middle of something. It feels like, you know, not quite yeah. there yet. 
not quite there. I mean, let's let's review because this is. I think this is important to put this correction in context, right? We mm -hmm. went up one, two, three, four squares, mm -hmm. right? Pull back two squares. Yep, fifty percent. It's a fifty percent retrace. Mm -hmm. Perfectly normal. Doesn't have to be Armageddon. That being said, <laughs> we have we have a lot of a lot of cycles hit. Mm -hmm. And now we're looking to see, are we going to push up here and make a lower high mm -hmm. and then roll over? Because that could be a big move down, mm -hmm. you know, given the ferocity of this move. If we put in a lower high and this thing does roll over, it odds are it's going to be a really, really big move down. Or are we going to push up, make a higher high and keep going, make a higher high and false break? Mm -hmm. And all three options are on the table at this point. Right, uh, right. What we can do for, from our standpoint is today we get a full bar over this square. You know, yesterday we kind of did too, but the, so mm -hmm. that means, you know, the pressure is pushing up towards this half square, which mm -hmm. is right around 20,000. So that's where we expect, you know, price to go. As long as all pullbacks hold above this full square, you know, the 20,000 is the target. And then we see, what does it do here? Does it sit on top? If it sits on top, then we're going to attack those highs. If it gets mm -hmm. stuck here and can't can't get above, then we have the scenario of a lower high and potential rollover. Right. I mean, it's pretty simple. We, um, you know, we, we put this one by one on to know, okay, in any correction, let's see if we can hold above that. Mm -hmm. um, you can see what happened when we lost these. And here we did we lost it did a check back and then we got the flush mm -hmm. let's take a look at the weekly so weekly we had you know one two three four weeks down this is our first week up big up week mm -hmm. um here the key is going to be this half square which is around twenty thousand one hundred you know it's not too far off from the uh from the daily which is twenty thousand yep. so we'll see in that twenty thousand twenty thousand one hundred area you know how price handles that um we did get the 90 here mm -hmm. so that's that's big that's 90 weeks low to high and we got a yeah, nice I reaction mm -hmm. i can't imagine uh a 90 week run like that not having a larger correction that's that's the thing i can't so we'll, that's why i'm also thinking in terms of a counter trend yeah, and I think you're right to think that way. It, the only thing that you and I are are trying to figure out right now is, okay, what what kind of what's going to happen in this counter trend that's going to set up potentially the next big sell, you yeah, know, because exactly. of the cycles and because of the ninety, you know, ninety weeks and, and other things that came together there. It's like, how is it going to play out? Because everyone is different. Like, I mean, yeah. over here, the high, you could see we got a low and then a lower high. And then we went, you know, that was in uh, late 21 and 22. Right. So it just it plays out differently here. Here, look at this one in, in the COVID crash, right? We got the crash and then we just went up and kept going. Mm -hmm. And so those are examples of two possibilities. And then the, the other one would be the false break. Yeah. So we just we don't know at this point. We we we're trying to assess the odds based on the price action, and the more more price action that's revealed to us, the more we can sort of triangulate what is the the most probable scenario. But those are the three scenarios. Uh, let's take a quick look at the monthly. It's a heck of a monthly bar. It's working on, isn't it? Yep. <laughs> I mean, the key thing with the monthly, as you can see, is this level right here. Uh, and that's the the 108 at um, 18,750. Mm -hmm. Above that, it's in good shape. I mean, look at look at this is one of my favorite bars, the monthly bar of uh, of July. We we hit the half square on the top and the full square yeah. and the full square on the bottom. There you go. That's that's the way to bracket the price action, all in one month. Mm -hmm. So it it's it's very similar to the S and P. Uh, cash and the and the future you know we're we're trying to determine what is this counter trend you know how is this counter trend going to manifest and um we just don't have enough information yet and we're mm -hmm. at bar by bar we're we're sort of putting uh, odds on it 
and mm-hmm. we'll see we'll see where we get to and of course we'll keep you guys posted through x on posting during the week and and through our recordings as we as we become you know as one scenario becomes most probable we'll we'll detail it and, and map it out and let you know um, anything else to add here on the uh nqs no, we're good good job okay let's go to bitcoin bitcoin's interesting in that it's um it's not going anywhere, but man, is uh, is it really harmonic <laughs> with these squares? Look at how it's playing. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the lows this week, right on the half just, square. Yeah, yeah. The highs here on the full square. I mean, we're we're in this channel, and we just have to let this thing play out. Mm-hmm. Um, I get a sense that we're going to get some sort of major head fake before the real move. Yeah, you know, there's going to be some sort of big false break, you know, whether we take out this low here or we go up high, you know, take out the high here and then reverse hard. But th- this is this is a long time to be doing this. I mean, since February, March. Yeah, yeah. A long time. And you get a potential ABCD setting up in either direction. Yeah. Yep. So we got to let it play out. If you look at the monthly, it's even more confusing. <laughs> but the, the perspective I keep looking at is this is happening at these old highs. Mm-hmm. You know, as long as we don't get stuck under this full square, you know, the odds favor a bullish resolution. Right. And on the on the monthly, that full square is right around uh, 54,300. Mm-hmm. So in that 54,000 area, if we start trading under that and get stuck under that, that that's bad news for Bitcoin monthly basis. So sort of a, a bigger picture thing. Let's quickly jump over to the, um, to the commodities. I'm only going to review one today, silver, the other ones as, as Barry showed with Nat gas, it had a nice move up and now it's pulling back. Want to see how that resolves. Same with crude oil, same with the softs, same with the, the grains, the grains are really leaking right now. So there, there seems to be some massive liquidation going there. Not wheat, but corn and soybeans made new lows this week. So mm. we really got to watch those closely to, for signs of, you know, a low coming in because there's there's value when you look at the, the monthlies on those things. They're mm-hmm. in areas where previous values have been found. But let's go, let's jump over to silver and then we can leave enough time for a chat. We had a nice week on silver. The the yeah. thing that that I liked here is we pushed above and closed above this half square. That was twenty eight thirty six level, and we we punctured the one by one off of this high. Mm-hmm. You know, if it was really weak, we would have come up and sort of tested the half square, maybe even pushed ahead a little bit and then closed down here below it, and that would have opened up coming down and retesting the lows. Mm-hmm. The push up, as long as the next week we stay above that, you know, let's call it 2836. Mm-hmm. You know, we open up to here, 30, 30 and a quarter. That looks like the next stop daily basis, as long as we hold above there. Um, put this one by one on, as long as we're on the, the north side of that, we're in a bullish position. Let's um, Let's take a look at the weekly. Bigger picture. So here, last week, we talked about how we had a plunge below, but a close above that full square on the weekly. See, this is where the close was last week, right there. Mm-hmm. This week, we get the bar above and a push taking out that high. So there's your weekly reversal, which is which is important. Close on the highs of the week, very important. Next big test is going to be up here at this half square, and that's 29.75. When you look left, Looks pretty bullish, doesn't it? Sure does. And we talked about that a while back too. I yeah, think. sitting on top of these highs mm-hmm. in this, you know, was was probing this area of highs made, you know, in 2020 and 2021. That's a that's a hold right there. Yep. Meaning it held, you know, support. Now mm-hmm. we see, you know, can we punch through, get through this this one by one downtrend line and and start making, you know, all time highs for this run. Let's lastly look at the monthly. Look where the low came in. Perfect. Right on the full square. And while the month's not over, we're we're up near the high end of the candle. 
if in any way possible, if they could really push this thing the last week and take out these highs, that would be super bullish. But as it is, we stayed on top of the support. Mm -hmm. You know, this former mm -hmm. highs is now are now support. And the setup with the setup with silver looks bullish. Mm -hmm. So we'll we'll see how it plays out. Anything you want to add here on silver? No, you did a good job. We're good. So so that's you know, silver's silver looks good. The rest of the commodities this coming week, we want to watch them and see if we get get some some bottoms forming that we can uh then position long mm -hmm. but but as we talked about earlier uh in the in the year the second half is is going to be wild the end of uh, august early september is going to be crazy so rest oh, up and enjoy yeah. the weekend great job right. barry on on the review this week thanks ben good job and we'll see you guys next week we'll Thank talk you. next week mm -hmm. all right bye, bye.